Now, whenever Debo Samuel's name was brought up uh, in a possibility for Ravens trading for him, like in questions from subscribers and stuff, y'all know I would shut that down quick. Like, no, I do not want the Ravens to trade for Debo Samuel. And no, it's not because he's not a baller because we know he is. No, it's not because he's not a playmaker because we know he is. Not because he couldn't add to the Ravens offense because we know he could, but my biggest holdup was that I just felt like the Ravens' use of him, I felt like they wouldn't use him the right way. I felt like they would overthink stuff with him and they would overcomplicate the usage of one Debo Samuel. And a lot of stuff that they would try to do with him, they would just make it so obvious. So that's why I just, I was so against the idea of the Ravens trading for Debo Samuel. And whenever possible trades names came up for wide receiver, we've talked about them like I would much rather prefer like a DK Metcalf or an AJ Brown. And if I had to choose one of the three, it still would be one of those two, either AJ Brown or DK Metcalf. But my thoughts um, on the possibility of a Debo Samuel have changed a lot. Now, not saying that I think it's going to happen. I mean, anything is possible, but if I had to give like a percentage on it, it, if I thought it could happen or not, I would say about like 75% sure that it would not happen uh, and 25% sure that it would. Um, and that's really with any wide receiver right now. While I would love for the Ravens to do something like that, I just don't expect for them to do it. But as far as Debo Samuel specifically, my tune on him has changed a lot. And it was all due to one conversation that I had from a Twitter space. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. But before we get into that, I got to give a huge shout out to my guy, Herb, and his family out in Hawaii. Um, they sent this to our P.O. box. They sent all these like treats and, and goodies and stuff uh, from Hawaii. Uh, they sent us this, um, this sour watermelon. Uh, they sent us these mangoes. I know my wife, she's going to tear these up. Um, where are my chocolate covered gummy bears? I, I was just looking at them. Now I don't see them. Oh, here they go. They were right here. This this the one that I'm looking forward to eating. Um, but yeah, they sent that. Uh, him and his family, they sent my wife this bag. Uh, they, they sent us the, the shirts, man. They like they, they hooked it up a lot. Shirts for my wife, shirts for Carter. And then my favorite of all, man. <laughs> love this, man. My favorite of all, they sent this Raven shirt, and I love it. it oh, I didn't even know that, man. And I didn't even see this till just now. Then on the back, it says Ravens Flock, man. I love this shirt, man. I, I, I love it. So, Herb, I appreciate you. I appreciate your family. Thank you so much, seriously, for, for being willing to do that, man. I, we, we appreciate it a lot. So, thank you, man. Um, it was just, it, it was nice, man. It, it was nice to, because uh, we always talk about how the, the positivity on here outweighs the negativity by far. Um, something, just a word of advice before we get back to Debo Samuel. Don't let uh, people that don't matter throw you off your game. A lot of times I can be guilty of that. Um, just letting people who don't matter throw me off my game, whether it be like haters or extra negative people, something like that. And I, I, I got to get out of that. And we all got to get out of that. So, and it's, it ain't even no point in engaging with people like that. Ain't no point in responding to people like that. Sometimes it can be so easy to respond. Okay, if y'all know me, like I... I, I could be quick to respond to some stuff, man, but I got to try to get out of that hat because it, it doesn't it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything for anybody. Um, so anyway, love y'all again. Herb, thank you to you and your family big time, man, for real. Now, um, something that the Ravens could possibly again, I don't think it's likely, but some something that the Ravens could possibly end up getting in their P.O. box could be a Debo Samuel. Um, and if that happened. Whew, that would be something right there. But let me tell you why my mind changed and my whole tune changed uh, on the possibility of the Ravens adding a Debo Samuel. Because the impact that it could have, it, it could impact the Ravens in a positive way in more ways than one. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. Shout out to She Talks Football, Miss Gina. If anybody has ever done a, been in a Ravens Twitter space, y'all know exactly who she is. So... Y'all know me on here, whenever we talk about wide receivers, we talk about the Ravens, we talk about investments, we talk about how if you are a wide receiver and you're drafted by the Ravens, it's already hard enough, um, even if you're drafted in the first round. But that seems to be changing right now as far as the first round draft picks because Hollywood, he's been doing his thing. Rashad Bateman, he looks like he's going to do his thing. So looks like that, that whole tune is changing. But the tune that hasn't been changing is if you're drafted 
Second round is pushing it, but definitely third round or later. If you're drafted in the third round or later, the investment is just really not going to be there in you as a wide receiver. Uh, more recent guys, we've seen it with Devin DuVernay. I mean, I know somebody, like, oh, he's all pro, though. He was a kick returner. He's all pro at kick returner, not at wide receiver. So Dev, Devin DuVernay, Miles Boykin, James Prochet. Tylen Wallace is still to be determined, but so we'll see. But I, with the Ravens' history, it ain't really looking good. Hopefully that changes now, but we'll see. Um, so my, my big argument with the Ravens is that, again, if you're not drafted in the first round of wide receiver, then the, the investment's not going to be there in you. So in a Twitter space the other day, the topic was, Debo Samuel, it was Ravens and 49ers and the possibility of the Ravens trading for one Debo Samuel. Um, so I shared my thoughts on why I do not think it would be a good idea. Uh, like we said earlier in this video, I just feel like they would mismanage how they use him. They would make stuff so obvious with him. Devin DuVernay right now is a jet sweep king. I think he would be demoted to jet sweep prince and then uh, Debo would end up being a jet sweep king. And I, I just feel like everything, every time that he, the ball is going to go his way, I feel like the Ravens would just make it so uh, obvious, so obvious to everybody that the ball was about to be in his hands. And I just don't feel like they would maximize the usage of him. But she talks football, Miss Gina. She, she, she made some really great points that countered my argument. And I was like, oh, OK. And I told her afterwards, I said, thank you. for Now you, you done changed my whole tune on Debo Samuel. Um, so she said first she talked about how if the Ravens were to trade for Debo Samuel, that would be them making an investment in him. And we know that Debo Samuel is not just any random player in the NFL. <laughs> so whatever they gave up for him, it would be of significant value uh, because he's a really great player uh, and he is a huge difference maker for the 49ers, a huge difference maker. Um, so whether it was a first round pick or a second round pick or whatever, I think if, if they, if whoever gives up something for him, if he does get traded, I think it'll be a second round pick and change, uh, only because they have to pay him. They're taking that responsibility off the 49ers hands. So I think it'll be a second round pick and change. So a second round pick and a third and fifth or second and a fourth and fourth or second and, and some change. Uh, but anyway, um, so the investment would be there. Uh, that is a difference maker. That's a player. But then uh, she also talked about what I said about the usage of him. And this is where it got really interesting for me. She said for the Ravens, if they were to get a Debo Samuel, then worst case scenario, if they aren't using him the right way. Then g would have to be out of here. He would have to be out of here because you don't acquire a player of that caliber and then misuse him. You don't acquire, you don't give up whatever draft picks they would give up, and if they were to pay him or whatnot, you don't give that up and just have him sitting around or just have him not even involved in the game. You don't do that. And I'm not here to be, oh, fire Giro, fire Giro. But, I mean, we know that, in my opinion, I, this is Giro's last year, whether he makes it through the whole year or he doesn't make it through the year. I think this is definitely Greg Roman's last year. Again, same stuff we've been saying because they brought on a T. Martin and Keith Williams, and now they hired the guy, uh, Kerry Dixon, because um, I think they're trying to really transform this offense and do more with it. And, and that's not Greg Roman's specialty. His specialty is not opening up the offense. His specialty is in the run game. That's what Greg Roman is known for. Even though um, when you look at a lot of his run games, a lot of it is just his quarterbacks. Especially the Ravens. You take away Lamar's rush yards, and it's like, ooh. And I remember my guy, Time to Fly, my guy, he was the one that first brought that up. And I was like, oh, oh my. That's, that is so true. You take away Lamar's rushing yards from out of these offenses, and then they're just like, oh, okay, that's it? Oh, that's what it, oh, okay, well, uh, yeah. And it's, it's not nearly as special uh, as it's, it, it looks to be. Then you go back to Kaepernick. You go to Tyrod Taylor. But anyway, we can talk about that another day. Um, but I do think that if, if they were to grab a Debo Samuel and they weren't doing the right thing with him, then Greg Roman would be gone. He'd be gone. Because you can't play around with that, man. You can't waste time, especially if Ravens are really in win-now mode like we believe that they are. 
You cannot waste time if you're going to put those assets into acquiring a phenomenal player. He can't just be sitting around. He can't just be having no impact on the game. It's one thing if you tried all this different stuff with him and, oh, man, it's just not working. Actually, that that is something right there, too. That would be another reason, too. If you can't find a way to make him put him in positions to succeed and it's him and you know what he can do. <laughs> No, man. Yeah, you're, you're going to be done. You're going to be done sooner rather than later. And so that that was one thing. And that for me, that was the biggest thing that changed my mind. Because I'm like, oh, man, well, OK. It, yeah, if the Ravens don't use him right, if he's not effective, then, yeah, they would they would not be like, all right, we're going to get rid of Debo. They'd be like, no, we're going to get rid of Jibo. I, I just said Jibo. Wow. Um, G. Rowe, excuse me. Uh, but anyway. Another thing, too, another positive impact that he could have is that it works out. Even with Giro, is that he actually works out, that he comes through and the Ravens don't overcomplicate things. They don't overthink things and they actually use him effectively. Now, um, that's kind of scary to think about because a lot of us, we, 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 we get frustrated at the way that the <laughs> A lot of us get frustrated at the way that the Ravens use their guys now that they already got. And we feel like they don't use them the right way. We feel like they don't use them effectively enough besides Mark Andrews. But we feel like the Ravens could do, as far as their pass catchers, uh, their wide receivers, we feel like they could do a much better job at the way that they use them. So if you add on to that, then it could be like, Ooh, I don't know, man. And I know that was a lot of people's argument against me wanting the Ravens to acquire one DK Metcalf because some people, oh, we don't pass the ball enough. Oh, we don't open up the offense enough. Oh, man, that's not it's so weird because it just Lamar Jackson. Um, in, And I know my guy, uh, my guy, Jamel, shout out to Jamel. He brought this up, too. That the, Lamar, in, in college, Lamar Jackson was running the spread offense. They had a vertical passing game. So that, that's why, you know, Lamar, Lamar always looking downfield, man. Lamar with them little, little, little dump offs, them little check downs. Lamar like, man, I don't know, stinging check down, man. I don't nobody want to throw no check down, man. I'm trying to go deep. That's why Lamar, he, he'd try it, man. Uh, but in college, he ran that spread offense, man, pushing that ball downfield. And then you always hear the argument that, oh, this offense was built for Lamar. No. My guy Jamil said it best. He said this offense was built for Greg Roman. Not for Lamar. It was built for Greg Roman. Greg Roman, this is not what Lamar was doing at Louisville. It wasn't. So, and, and now, like, the Ravens, they've had success with it, obviously. But it's been limited success. That's why a lot of people, especially myself, really want to open it up so you can maximize the potential of the quarterback that you got, even though I feel like we, we shouldn't still be having this conversation in year five. That's what can be so frustrating about this whole thing. This is year five for Lamar Jack, year four as a full-time starter. But this is year five, and we're still having this conversation about the Ravens' offense, about them opening up the offense. We're still having this conversation in year five, going into year five. That's sad. That's sad. So, anyway, adding to Debo Samuel... <laughs> It could, it could help a lot. And, of course, like we mentioned earlier from another Twitter space, he was the guy that originally brought this to my attention, was my guy Skeptigoat about the yak, the yards after the catch. Because Ravens, a lot of, lot of times, some, some of their plays, they will get yak, but a lot of times they catch a ball, boom, it'll go, go down. My guy Dino, he brought this up the other day. He said, oh, Ravens, they'll throw a pass, and the pass will go to the 15-yard line, and the play will stop right there at the 15-yard line. Because it'll be such a lack of yak. Lack of yak. Oh, I like that. That sounds like, like a Disney movie or something. The lack of yak. But yeah, man. So that's something that Debo could help with. And that's something that uh, guys that we already got to. No, Bateman, he's going to be able to do that. Hollywood, get him in stride. He's going to be able to do the same thing. And Mark Andrews. You know Mark Andrews. Like, again, I think it was a Browns game last Or maybe the Chiefs game last I forget which one. Maybe it was both. But Mark Andrews was like literally, he caught a pass and he was literally like dragging players along. He was dragging them for the ride. I almost thought they was going to drug test the master of the game, but they did not. And I'm sure Mark Andrews would have been team keep it clean anyway. But 
When I saw him doing that, I said, whoa, Mark Andrew. Okay, now. I like it. I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad. Um, but anyway, so do I hope that the Ravens add somebody significant at the wide receiver position? I certainly do. Uh, will it come via trade? I would love if it did. Do I think it's going to happen? I don't expect it to at all. Uh, but if they don't do it via trade, then again, first three rounds, they're going to be drafting a receiver. And if I had to choose the exact round, I would say definitely uh, in the second at the least, at the lowest, and at the latest. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all so much. We got a question from subs coming up this week. We got all kind of stuff coming up this week. I love y'all. Thank you for watching, and thank you all for supporting. We out.